Hey, hey, hey. It's the energy focus for the week. Yep, these weeks do go fast, right? Sunday morning. Time to come on and focus our energy, look ahead for what's going on this week and how it can best help you to focus in. It's going to be a crazy week. So come on in and join me. Tari Ann Hyman here, Natural Forces Studio and the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Welcome. Hey, Patrick, welcome. Good morning. So come on in for a few minutes and join me. We're going to be talking about this week, what's going on, and how you can best focus your energy. Definitely have a lot of things coming up this week. All right, we're moving into dark of the moon and then a new moon eclipse, another eclipse, a solar eclipse this week coming up. All right, third one in a row that we've had since the beginning of July. What is all of this energy doing for you? What do you notice? Post in the comments below. I'd love to hear. What are you noticing? Is it making you a little bit unstable? Is it making you go through shifts? What is it for you? I'd love to hear what it is. Let me know. How are you noticing these effects coming up for you? I know I've gone through a lot. I'll share with you a little bit of what's going on for me as well. But yeah, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. And we can choose to either fight the energy or we can choose to be really creative and go forward with the energy. What is it for you? Are you fighting it a little bit? Are you being creative and getting out of your own way? I know that's kind of the theme of the month. I think I had posted it in the Empowered Spirit Circle. If you're not in the circle, come join us. I posted the Mystic Mama reading, talking about getting out of your way, being creative, thinking outside the box. Because yes, I know that it is kind of hard sometimes. I know, right? We get caught in our own ways. I'm just sharing it out here right now. Empowered Spirit Circle. Here we go. Come join us. All right. So, there we go. I think I got one more to post. If you can, just hit that share button for me. While I'm sitting here sharing it out into the world, come and hit that share button as well. One more group. Here we go. All right, I'll be with you in one second. Come on in and join me. I think that's it. Here we go. All right. Can never do five things at once, especially when it has to do with technology. All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome in this morning. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on astrologically, cosmically, energetically, and how you can best focus your energy to move forward through this time. So, yes, this month, we're in August. It is all about... Kind of stepping out of yourself, like looking at where you are, both sides. What can you do to kind of be in that creative force of energy to help you move forward in your life? All right. We've had a lot of this eclipse energy going on. We've still in the retrograde. We've got the Mercury retrograde. We've got the Mars retrograde as well. Mars is in that night sky. So it's really affecting us. The vibrations of the planets are coming down on us and it's really affecting us. So if we're not aware, we can like be a little bit like, what's going on with my life? Like I can't seem to move forward. I can't do anything. Or if you kind of bring it in and notice it's like, take a chill. All right, where can you step aside? Like maybe do a little side dance instead of pushing, 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 because the pushing's not going to help right now. Nothing ever goes forward in Mercury retrograde when you push. No, we have to go back. We have to step back. We have to take a break, take a breath. That's really the key word. And that's what we're going to focus on in the meditation is take a breath, take a pause, understand better how you can then relax into this part. We're at the end of the summer, kind of the late summer, they call it. How can you relax so that you can make shifts instead of push, push, push? That's the energy we're in. All right, we've talked a little bit about the whole the whole um, eclipse energy because it shakes it up. It's like a roller coaster. It creates these portals of energy. It can make you feel a little bit unsure of where you are. So we have to find ways that we can work through it instead of pushing forward. So right now, I know for myself, boy, did I just clean out my closets like, ugh, of my image and how I'm dressing and how I'm looking. I just cleaned out bags of it, donate, give away, and then free up the space. I actually like walking into my closets now. They're like open and airy. And that's what you can do now too. Review, renew. That's all that retrograde energy. And that will help you to understand where you can make those choices in your life. It really is. Lots of creative energy coming in right now. And that's the best way to do it because creative energy... 
Think about it. What does it do? It makes you think differently. It makes you take a chance. It makes you stand on the edge, right? It's like, okay, how can I look at this from a different perspective? I know for myself, when I get like, ah, oh, tunnel focused and I'm pushing and pushing, the best thing I can do is get up and get outside and go for a hike, go for a walk. And sure enough, I'm right in my recorder recording those ideas that just wouldn't come forward. And that's what we have to do. Cards are jumping all around. That's what we have to do. We have to kind of come at this from a different angle. We can't keep pushing in the same way. We really have to. And getting out to the earth, that is really important. All right, we've got a lot of Uranus um, energy coming up too. And Uranus is kind of that energy that started early spring and just started pushing things up, the volcanoes and the fires and all of that energy, which is changing Mother Earth. It's changing Mother Earth. And our connection to Mother Earth is really important. So where can you get outside and where can you put your feet into the earth? Feel the dirt, feel the earth, so that you can consciously work with that energy. That's going to be the creative force coming forward, that prana, that fresh chi coming up. Things are being shooken up underneath the surface. Maybe you don't feel it. Maybe you're not aware of it. But it happens. It really does. So when we can become in alignment with it, we can let go of the worry. We can let go of the anxiety. And we can just be in that present moment. That is what is really key right now. It really is. It's really hard when we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, especially right now. Late summer, eclipse energy, dark of the moon week, a new moon on Saturday. We have all of this energy. So really get outside and experience more of what it feels like to be really present with your energy. Not everybody else's, your energy and Mother Earth. What does that mean for you? And that really is the best way to move through this eclipse season right now. Consciously working, consciously anchoring your life. It's really important. All right, I find that that is really the best advice for this week coming up. We dark of the moon comes, so that can bring in some of that shadow work. It's okay. All right, that is okay. We have to embrace both of it. But don't let it throw you off. Don't let it go down into a tunnel. Really important. Some of the great stones that I love this time of, um, for this time of week, you know, with the dark of the moon, <clears throat> is the dravite. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dravite is that dark black tourmaline. All right, so tourmalines still have a positive energy, but the dravites are going to help you ground and feel that connection to the earth. All right, so find some dravite. Here's one. Here's another one. It has this nice, long kind of uh, formulation. See that? That's nice. It feels that connection. Put your feet deep into the earth. Those are really great. If you can, another easier stone might be the hematite. Black, shiny. It'll push out what's not yours and help you to connect with yours as well. I also have one other one, which is really cool. They're not as easy to find. This is a tektite. This is from outer space that landed on the earth. And this will really help you connect with the cosmic energy. That one you're not going to find as much. But you can find the dravites and you can find the hematites. Really great stones. Carry them with you. Put them in your pocket. Wear them as jewelry. That will really help you to connect and ground with that energy. All right? So, yes. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. I just jumped right in. I get so excited to talk about the cosmic influences on our energy system. All right. Really important. The other thing that I really wanted to talk about, I posted on Instagram earlier this week about... If you don't have a spiritual practice when you're feeling great and good, how can you expect it to help you when you're in crisis? How can you, right? And most of us only turn to it when we're in crisis, but having a spiritual practice each and every day can really help you feel that connection. It'll help you go inside and go, what's going on with me today? It'll help you listen, what do I need to do? Do I need to eat better? Do I need to take care of myself? Do I need to get outside? But if we're always too busy and we don't stop, it's hard to distinguish what we need. All right, then you're going to feel lack of confidence. You're not going to feel as strong as who you are. You're not going to have that alignment of all the levels of the body, right? The mind is what's going to take over. So really important, if you don't know how to create a spiritual practice, go on over to my website. All right, links in the bios. Find it. You can download it. It's a guide to setting up your spiritual practice. And the first thing we start with is creating that sacred space. All right, very easy and it's fun. It doesn't have to be hard, right? Spiritual practices don't have to be hard and, and just drudgery. No, they can be alive and fun. I love it for myself. Right now, my spiritual practice is outside. I get out there early in the morning. I hear the birds. You can do the same. And it makes me feel alive and connected to the seasons, to the earth, and to where we are right now. And that is what's really important. It's really easy to get distracted about what's out there rather than what's inside. 
It's easy to get distracted by everybody else's energy rather than what is your own. All right, what is it for you? What are you noticing the most right now? All right, and all you guys, you know that I really am dedicated to helping people open up to their spiritual part of who they are. What is it you need from me? All right, what is it you'd like to see me talk about? Let me know, all right? I'll be on this week again. You know, I always come on on Sunday. What are some of the topics? Post below. I'd love to hear from you or post in the group, all right? I really believe that I can help serve more in a greater way when I know what it is that you guys are looking for. All right, is it about spiritual practice? Is it about setting up a sacred space? Is it about breathing? Is it about how to meditate? All right, I've been doing a great meditation class on Tuesdays, downtown, awake, be him. Come on, you can come join me at Forma, 12 o'clock, and we'll, we'll meditate together. And that will help you create that practice for yourself. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to take the advice of the cosmos and we're going to come into breathing. Simple breathing, although it's not as simple as we all think, right? So wherever you are, if you can, just take a moment. I seem to have lost one of my cards here. Just take a moment. Take a nice deep inhale. When you do, expand through the belly. Expand through the side of the ribs. Open the chest. Now here's key. As you exhale, imagine a magnet. Imagine you're the magnet. Exhale all that energy down. Call back all those parts of you that have been scattered out. Use this as a centering, inhaling and exhaling, calming that self, inhaling, bringing that breath up from the earth, little sage, and as you exhale, send it all the way back down, all those many parts, pull them in, all the people you've been in contact with this week, release the excess energy as impasse, really important. As impasse, it's really important to do this. Inhale, bring that breath up. And as you exhale, pull the breath in. Feel the feet on the floor. Feel the energy going through the feet, deep into the earth. Inhaling. And let us just call in. Call in your higher guidance. Feel that alignment right over the head. Call it in. Call in the masters. Call in the teachers. Ask to be protected and guided as you move through this week. Call in, call in that higher self so you understand what the dark of the moon is offering you right now. Call it in, inhaling and exhaling. Feel yourself pulling inside. That's what we want. Spiritual practice is inside. It's not out there, it's inside. Inhaling. And exhaling, honoring where you are right now, good, bad, or indifferent, those are lessons we learn. Here we are in the late part of summer. Where is that passion? Where is that fire for you? How is that energy working in your own life right now? Inhaling and exhaling, feeling yourself grounding with the earth. This is probably the most important thing you can do all week. Breathe and ground. Inhaling. And exhaling. Pulling that energy in. Centering. Feeling the spiritual body coming in. Aligning with the physical body. Shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips, feet and feet. Feel that vertical breath up the body. And exhaling it back down, deep into the earth. Feel yourself calming and centering with you using the breath. Allow all the other stuff around you just to calm as well as you come into the center of who you are. Setting that intention for this week to be grounded. Setting the intention to use your breath when you feel lost. Setting the intention to come back to the centering of who you are right now. Inhaling. And exhaling, bringing the awareness back. Notice how you feel, coming back, opening the eyes. How do you feel? How does that make you feel right now? Notice that. That is what you want to come back to all week. When things feel out of sorts, come back to the breath, come back to the grounding. All right, so we're gonna look at the cards. 
beautiful cards that we stopped with. I dropped one. Hold on. It's an important one. I didn't want to lose it. So we're using the Shaman cards. I love these cards. Colette Baron reeds and Alberto Bellardo from Four Winds. Shaman cards. They're really beautiful. I love them because they connect me to the earth. Going up to the medicine wheel after this, doing a little course correcting for myself, moving rocks. So the first card that comes up for all of us is the ghost dance. All right, so the ghost dance, this is about, I love this because it reminds me of the little code of teachings that I follow. The ghost dance is all about connecting with that spiritual energy. All right, so traditionally the ghost dance is when they danced and danced and danced to keep their spirit alive, to keep their practices going. Really important for all of us. Reconnect with your ancestors, with that wisdom of teaching. Now, we don't have to be victim to it. Not what this card is about at all. But it's about taking that wisdom and that knowledge and bringing it forward for you, right? What is it for you that you can step into your life with, the spiritual aspects of who you are? What is it you want to bring forward? And let that empower you to make new steps in your own life. What is that dance? What is that dance for you? What does dance do? It offers us the movement and the freedom. And that's what this is about. They danced and they danced and they danced so they had no energy. All right, I'm not projecting that out. But where can you bring that dance back into your life? That's that creative force of energy with the wisdom of all that have come before us. We need these ceremonies. We need these rituals in our lives. So where can you go this week? Where can you find it for yourself, the rituals of your life, bringing this wisdom forward, and do a little dance, all right? That's the card for all of us. So the next card, if you chose number one, all right, if you didn't choose, just think of a number, one, two, or three, and we're going to look at each of these. So how can you do that? If you chose number one, I love this card. I haven't drawn any of these cards before. Stand still, all right? This is a great reminder to take a pause, especially this week. Remember what we said at the beginning, don't keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Take a pause, look at where you are, breathe. Beautiful card, beautiful reminder for this week, all right? We're going to feel the pressure. We're going to feel that little bit of a depression of energy as well. So chill. You know, yesterday I did this myself. It's like, ah, I felt a little bit of that depressed energy coming in, and I just stopped. Got in my chair outside, put my feet up, and I descended for an hour. Felt so much better. That's what this card is about. You can do this too. Get outside. Get in a hammock, right? Get on a raft, whatever it is for you, and chill. That is what that card is about, all right? And that's going to help you bring those rituals and creative energy forward. All right, the next card, if you chose card number two, is the staff, but it was reversed. All right, another beautiful card. So the staff... All right, this is all about that support, that mark between both worlds, right? The feminine and the masculine, the yin and the yang, right? The physical and the spiritual. That staff supports us in our, path, in our life, in our path, but it's reversed. So this is offering us that message of where can you really find that part? You're stuck between the two worlds. You don't know which way to go. Push, pull, push, pull. Where can you take that next step forward? And using that staff, right? Staffs help us find the balance. It helps us steady us. So sometimes when we have to take a new path or make a new step, we don't feel as easy. We don't feel as strong in our feet. And that's what this card is about, all right? Because it's in the reverse thing, it's like it's time to take a little bit of an action. Find out which it is for you, all right? Is it more of your spiritual world you need to work with it? Is it more of the physical world? I know I've been having to work on that one a little bit. All right, is it more of that positive outlook on life? Is it more taking a step forward in your work? Where is it for you? All right, now being in the retrograde, we're not going to get a lot of positive movement, but you certainly can feel where it is for you. And that's also a little bit reminds me of that course correct. All right, move those rocks, realign your life. All right, don't get stuck between both of those worlds. All right, and the third card, if you chose that, is the sun, but it's reversed too. So I love this too because summer, we always think of the sun, outward energy, Leo energy. We're in Leo right now. But this is actually in the reverse mode. So this is also telling us we need both parts. All right, so don't neglect the nighttime. Don't neglect the shadow part. Don't neglect the part that pulls us in. All right, and being that we're coming into another eclipse, really important for that alignment of who you are. So if you feel like you've been out there, out there, out there a lot, now's the time to pull that energy in. All right, the sun is shining. It's more of that masculine energy. Beautiful card, but in the reverse mode, it's offering us the opportunity to slow down. Again, going back to that standstill. 
That's how we can find that creative force of energy. Maybe you're caught between both worlds. Where is it that you need to kind of shift, course correct, and use that staff, that stick, that pull to help you find what is that path for you. And the sun, don't forget we always need the sun and the dark, day and night. We need both aspects of life. All right, so hopefully those are going to help you as you go through this week. Find those places that you can find the rituals in your life. Do a little dance. Show up for yourself. Really important. All right, that's the energy we have. We'll be at that new moon energy, but it's an eclipse on Saturday, which means Thursday and Friday, you're going to feel the dark of the moon, and you're going to feel that release. Right now, we're in that release mode, which is good. So the best things we can do right now is today, like clean up, clean out, declutter, all of that kind of energy right now is really important for you so that you can feel that breath of air, especially as we get out of next week and we get out of this eclipse. This eclipse is a cycle, three eclipses we've had. So where can you release that as well? All right, I've had a few requests for cards. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to leave those cards aside so we can choose other ones. Three, death, oh, seven. I don't know who you are, but yes, you definitely can have a card. All right, I got a little thumbs up there, a little heart. All right, I'm going to put a card for you. Do you have a question? What does spirit want you to know for this week? That's kind of what we're looking at. Water. Water is the flow of emotions, all right? So it's a really great time to get in the water and to let those emotions flow. Don't let them stick, all right? Don't hold on. No emotion is ever final. That was a really great thing I learned. No emotion is ever final. So where can you let that water come in? Ease up some of the fire. Summer's about fire, but we need water too, all right? So where are you holding on to your emotions? What can you let go of? No emotion is ever final, all right? So let the flow of life come in. Put your feet in water today, all right? Put your feet in water. All right, let me know if that was helpful for you, all right? Let me know. All right, who else? All right, anybody else want a card? I'll hang out a few more minutes. So let's see. Also, too, I wanted to say on the Empowered Spirit Show, last week we talked about the ABCs of CBD. Really great, great episode talking about how they help with Shira Adler, all the many things that come in. Check it out. This week, we're going to be talking about the three most important reasons that people are using the CBD oils. My guest is Laura Logano. She happens to be the co-founder of the Holistic Cannabis Academy. Very excited for this episode as well. If you haven't had a chance to check out the episodes, the summer series, I'll be wrapping it up soon, but check it out. Lots of great information. And one of the things I've noticed that everybody I'm interviewing has come to the CBD oils, the cannabis plant, out of maybe it's a healing for themselves, their mother or their child, some kind of health issue. They've come to this plant and amazing results. So be sure to check it out. I'm excited to share this episode. All right, Mayor, I'll give you a card. Let's choose one for you. What does Spirit want you to know for this week? The blade. All right, the blade is about action. All right, it's all about taking action, Mayor. It's all about stepping up your light, taking action, cutting through the crap. All right, I had to say that. Cutting through the crap. That's what a blade does. Cut it off, all right? It also can help you cut the cords that are keeping you stuck. Blade is a very powerful card. So really, right now, where can you do that, Mara? Where can you cut the crap, let it go, be gone, it's done, it's over, so you can step into that path? Otherwise, if you don't, you're going to feel the energy this week. You're going to feel that dark of the moon energy. But it's a great time to cut off the crap, get rid of the clutter, Get rid of anything that you're holding on to that reminds you of that old energy, all right? For me, I've been cleaning closets. And maybe you need to clean out reminders of whatever that energy is. Cut it out. Get rid of it. Get it off your phone. Get it off your email. Get it off of your belongings, whatever it is for you. Let it go. Because then what you're going to notice is that new moon energy comes in and you move forward and we move out of the retrograde. Retrograde's over 19th, at least Mercury is. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel strong. You're going to feel empowered. A great card. This is a really great card. The blade. Cut it out. Let it go. You can even use that motion of I am done. I teach that in my program. I teach that in my Empowered Spirit program. I teach you how to cut those cords. Yes, Derek. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thanks. It was. All right. Hi, Laura. Hi, Patrick. Patrick, how about a card for you? Thanks for coming to the 
Restorative. I didn't see Kundalini. Who else? Let's see. All right, Patrick. There we go. See what we can do for you. Patrick, I know you're outside a lot. Let's see what the universe has, wants for you to know this week. The moon. <laughs> All right. So it's just offering you that special idea of being in alignment with the moon. Knowing we're going through that dark of the moon this week to a new moon on Saturday. All right. So new moons generally are associated to... New Moon, somebody wants to come on the show. Oh, I'd love to do that. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if that'll happen. I've never done it, but let's try this. All right, so remember that New Moons generally are all about being in that cycle of newness. Because we have the eclipse, then we've got a little bit of that shooken up. But don't forget to really set those intentions to be able to understand what it is you're going through in your own cycle of life, right? I love the moon because it's constantly changing, right? Where can you change it up this week for you? Don't get caught in the darkness, but allow the shadow side to help you be in the area of learning about what it is for you. Know that Saturday, that new moon is coming, so you can set those new intentions. All right, we may not feel that the new intentions are coming forward this week because of the dark of the moon, but you can still renew, review, put them out there again. All right, Laura, no problem. I don't know what that was either. I am learning too. All right. So, would you like a card? Maybe that's what you are offering. So, Laura, maybe that's what it is. I'm going to draw a card for you. The arrow. I love this. I have not drawn this card before, but look how the arrow per per pierces through. Kind of like the blade. But I think sometimes with the arrow, it has more to do with what is your target? What are you aiming for? All right? And maybe you don't have that. Maybe it's not clear for you, but really setting what is the bullseye? All right, what is that target for you that you can shoot that arrow in? And maybe it's kind of been all over the place, so it's a time to refocus. All right, and again, that refocus, redo, renew, that is the perfect way to look at the retrograde energy. Again, like yesterday, I was redoing my closets and everything. Gosh, it feels so good. It really did. I spent a couple of hours. So where can you refocus what your target is for you as we move through all of this energy? I hope that was helpful for you. All right, anybody else? Let's see, what else is going on? Powered Spirit Show, new episode drops. I do have a Reiki class coming up on the 19th. I have my, my Mastery Leadership Retreat this weekend. I am super excited. We've been working all year on this. This weekend we're doing it. Learning the Reiki Master Retreat. I'm so excited how to pass the attunements. That's coming up for us for my spiritual leadership group. And then I have a Reiki, Reiki one on the 19th, so check it out. You can find that on the Natural Forces Studio website page. All right, guys, it's going to be a crazy week. Be strong. Practice those breathing techniques because they will really help you to do that, all right? Let me know if you have any questions. And again, post below. What would you like to hear me talk about? What is some of the questions that you may have with the cosmos, with energy fields, with vibration, sacred space? Post below. Give me something to talk about and offer. I am dedicated to this passion of working with spirituality, of bringing it out into everyday life. We need it. Don't save it for crisis each and every day. So thanks for joining me. Come on over to the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Let me hear from you. Makes my heart feel so good when I do. All right. Hey, Jeannie, how are you? All right, guys. Anybody else before I close it down, heading to the medicine wheel Going to do a little course correct with those rocks for myself. All right. All right. Shannon, what about a card for you? How did you like the ghost dance? You guys, Shannon teaches a soul dance in the dark, Mondays at Villager Yoga. Check it out. That's exactly what this first card was about. Bring that energy forward. This one's for you, Shannon, right? The ghost dance. Bring that energy forward as you move through your week. All right. Anything else? Anybody else? Last chance. All right, guys, get outside, bring some breath to your life, ground your energy, be strong in who you are, open up to your spirit. Have a great week. Let me hear from you. To your spirit, namaste.